Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chelsea. I have another word to release to you guys today. So the title of this video is called, He Loves You So Much, okay? And so this message really is for the men, all right? Um, women, y'all can listen and take what you may feel could be for you, but it really is dedicated to the men, all right? So this word is going to be based off of a song that guy gave me he had already confirmed that i needed to release this but of course like i said i have not been feeling it um and the song came on the radio the other day so i know he wants me to go ahead and get it out so this is a song by tupac it's called do for love okay it's a remix of bobby caldwell i think that's his name um he recently passed but the original song um if you guys want to go listen to the original song, it's dope as well. But uh, yeah, that's a song that we will be going over. Again, this message is for the men. So let's just dive into the lyrics and allow Holy Spirit to say what he needs to say to you men, okay? So in the beginning of this song, it starts off and it says, I should have seen you was trouble right from the start, taught me so many lessons. Okay, so this is you saying to God that from the start of your relationship with him, he has been teaching you so many lessons, okay? And that's why you're saying it was trouble right from the start because immediately when you started your relationship with God, he started to change you, okay, and change your perspective on things. He goes on to say how not to mess with broken hearts, so many questions. All right, so God was teaching you not to mess with broken hearts, okay? Not to deal with um, other people's brokenness and be taking that on, okay, as your own. And you've been having so many questions towards God because you have been dealing with broken people, specifically broken women, okay? He goes on to say, when this began, we was the perfect match, perhaps. We had some problems, but we working at it. Okay, so this is God saying that from the beginning, you and him had a perfect match. And now y'all having a lot of problems and now y'all are working at it. So your relationship with God is, you know, not where it should be. And you're trying to work these things out with the Lord. Okay, it goes on and it says, and now the arguments are getting loud. I want to stay, but I can't help from walking out. Just throw it away. All right, so the arguments getting loud, meaning that the frustration that you have with God has increased, okay? Um, you're saying that you want to stay in relationship with him, but it's getting tougher for you now. And you're kind of wanting to throw your relationship out with God because of you being frustrated. Okay, it says, just take my hand and understand. If you could see, I never planned to be your man. It just wasn't me. Okay, so the way the song is written, it's between a man and a woman, but the way God gave me revelation and interpretation is between God and his sons, okay? So when he says this, just take my hand and understand. If you can see, this is God just saying, take his hand, hold on, okay, and follow him, and he will show you the way. And then as you are saying in this song, I never planned to be your man. It just wasn't me. You never planned on having a relationship with God. You never planned on following him. It was never what you actually wanted but now you're in relationship with god it says but now i'm searching for commitment and other arms i want to shelter you from harm don't be alarmed okay so this is god saying that you've been searching for commitment and other arms meaning other gods you've been searching for an understanding of who he is through other idols other false gods other doctrines other than just Stand in his arms and allowing him to love on you and show you who he is, okay? I want to shelter you from harm. Don't be alarmed. So God is trying to protect you. So he's saying don't be alarmed about, you know, the things that you may be going through um, in your relationship with him. The things that you are finding out, you know, the things that are making you change and becoming a new person. It says, your attitude was the cause. You got me stressing. Soon as I opened up the door with your jealous questions. So this is you saying that God's attitude, meaning the things that he is calling you out of, the things that he is wanting you to do, um, 
it's got you stressing, okay? Because he's wanting you to change your life around, all right? And so he's saying, as soon as I open up the door with your jealous questions, God said that he is a jealous God and he will have no other God before him, okay? And God is asking you things, okay? He's speaking to you like, what are you doing? You know, he's trying to pull you out of darkness and pull you into the light. And so he's starting to question you about your lifestyle and about the things that you are doing. It says, like, where can I be? You're killing me with your jealousy. Now my ambitions to be free. I can't breathe. You're questioning, like, where can I go? You know, what can I do now? My ambitions is to be free now because every time I leave, you know, I'm starting to feel like I can't do this or I can't do that and it's starting to feel too much. That's why it says now my ambition is to be free because you're feeling um a little bit like this is too much for you. It's too much of it's too heavy for you um to completely drop the things that he's asking you to drop, you know, to really change in the way that he is calling you to change, okay? Um it's starting to be feel like a burden almost because he's wanting you to let go a lot of a lot of toxic living situations, toxic mindsets, um, and just anything that you know that he has been nudging you to let go of. You can't breathe because that's what it feels like when you're changing. Okay, when you're transitioning from the old you to the new you, you feel like, oh, this is a lot, you know, because it's the first time that you're really taking God serious. Okay. It says, cause soon as I leave, it's like a trap. I hear you calling me to come back. I'm a sucker for love. Okay, so he's saying as soon as he leaves, it's like a trap. Every time he leaves to go and to the men, when you're leaving to go do whatever, you're going to the strip club, going to the club, drinking, whatever it is that you know is you indulging in sin. You know he doesn't want you doing that. You hear him calling you to come back. Okay. You're feeling convicted about the things, fornication, all of this. You're feeling convicted about it. Um, you, because you have a relationship with him now, you no longer are free to be doing the things that he's asking you to stop. And so you're feeling heavy conviction and you hear him calling you and telling you to come back to him, to get out of this sin, to, to come back into a relationship with him, okay? And it says, I'm a sucker for love, meaning you love the Lord, so you are coming back. You are coming back from that prodigal state or from that um, backslide and you you really are wanting to listen to the Lord's voice when he's saying, get out of this situation, get out of this fornication, get out of this drinking, get out of this club and whatever it is he's pulling you out of. Um, you really are a sucker for love, meaning you are a sucker for God's love. You really do love God and really do want to do right and live right, okay? Um. The course says, what you won't do, do for love. You tried everything, but you don't give up. What you won't do for love. You tried everything, but you don't give up. Okay, so the course is saying that you will do anything to find who God really is, to search for who he really is. And you've already tried everything, but you won't give up. Okay, so you've tried um, other people's beliefs. You've tried believing um, in other religions. You've tried going out there searching for, you know, some type of explanation as into who God really is, and you haven't given up. All right, but God is just wanting you to come back to Him, your first love. Because again, in the beginning of the song, at the beginning it says we were a perfect match. So you had already knew who He was. You were just trying to find a way to. Oh, thank you, Lord. It was. You were trying to find a way um, of believing in God that would fit the way that you want to live, that would make you comfortable, that would make you feel secure. But because when you have to change with God, the real God, not a false God, not a false religion, it makes you uncomfortable because you really do have to change all the things about yourself that is not of him. Okay, And those things are uncomfortable. So a lot of times people in general try to find other ways to believe in God that will make them feel comfortable to where they don't really have to do the work necessary that God is asking them to do to change fully into who he wants you to be, okay? It's tough sometimes. Um, it goes on and it says, 
just when I thought I broke away and I'm feeling happy. You tried to trap me saying you pregnant and guess who the daddy. Okay. So, um, God is saying here, you've tried to leave, you've tried to break away and you've tried to feel happy about, you know, leaving God and finding your own way, finding your own belief about who he is instead of the truth of what you really deep down in your heart already know. And God is, is trapping you back into his, into his wings, into his arms, because he's saying you're pregnant with purpose. Okay. He has purpose for you and you are the daddy. You are the recipient of that purpose. Okay. And that is what he's saying. You know, you, you get in trap back up because he's calling you to purpose. He is calling you to something greater than, um, the, I guess you could say mediocre life that you have been living or the, um, what's the word stagnant, um, way that you have been living. He's calling you to something bigger. Uh, and that's why you keep getting back into his trap because he has purpose for you. All right. He knew you before you were formed into your mother's womb. All right. And then it says, don't want to fall for it. But in this case, what could I do? So now I'm back. So you don't really want to fall for the purpose that God has for you because it's scary. It seems like what he's trying to show you about yourself and who you are, it kind of feels like I've never done this before. I've never been this type of person. And so it's kind of, you've kind of got some fear about the purpose that God has for you. It, but it says, in this case, what could I do? So now I'm back. What can you do? Because you already have a relationship with him. Even if you strayed away, you still have a relationship with him. And so you are now back. It says, so now I'm back because you love the Lord. You have a relationship with him. And because you are his, nobody is snatching you from him, okay, from the love that he has for you, okay? It says, to making promises to you, trying to keep it true. What if I'm wrong? A trick to keep me holding on. Okay. So you've been making promises to God. And you've been trying to live up to the promises that you have made to him. And then you're questioning it, saying, what if I'm wrong? A trick to keep me holding on. You're thinking maybe this is a trick. Maybe that you should go back to believing what you used to believe about God or what you used to believe about the world and what purpose is um, according to your own logic and not God's and not God's um, actual words about what he has spoken over your life and what he has said about you and what he has said about all of us in the earth and what we should be doing. So you've been kind of questioning, you know, going back into the world and leaving God again. It says trying to be strong and in the process keep you going. I'm about to lose my composure. I'm getting close to packing up and leaving notes and getting ghosts. So you've been trying to be strong in this process of, of God showing you who you are, showing you purpose, showing you a new version of yourself and trying to keep God pleased at the same time. Um, it says, I'm about to lose my composure. I'm getting close. So, you know, you're really, really at that tipping point to where you're about to lose it. Like you're feeling like this is too much. This is too heavy. Okay. And God is saying, lay your burdens on him. Cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. That's what he said. Lay it out to him okay give it and hand it over to jesus it says to packing up and leaving notes and getting ghosts so you really are like at the edge of just walking away from god again like you really kind of fed up with with this position and spot that you're in with god and how y'all's relationship is going and you're feeling like it's too tough you know to keep walking forward with him you feel like it's just too strong it's too much requirement and it's it's, it's really getting hard for you it says, tell me who knows a peaceful place where I can go to clear my head. I'm feeling low, losing control. So you're searching for a peaceful place to go. You're trying to clear your head. You're feeling low. You're feeling down. You're feeling sad. You're feeling like you can't do nothing right. You may be feeling depressed or suicidal and you're just feeling like the end of this. Okay. And you're searching for peace and you're searching for a place to clear your head and your mind. And God is saying, he is your peace. He is your rest, okay? Be open with him. Be vulnerable with him about what's really going on in your heart, okay? Talk to God. Ask him questions, okay? Allow him to speak back to you, all right? Okay, it says, my heart is saying leave. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when we conspire to conceive. 
Okay, so you want to leave, but you're in this tangled well, meaning you're in this relationship with God and you can't get loose anymore because you've already received and conceived the purpose he has for you. Okay, it's already in process. Okay, there's no going back for you right now. It's just that you are still feeling like this frustration, but because you're in this tangled well with God, because you've already accepted the will of God, because you've already accepted the calling on your life, and you've accepted the purpose that he has for you in the earth, um, you're not going anywhere because you know um, that you have to stick it out and you have to finish and get through it. It says, you getting calls at the house, guess you cheating. That's all I need to hear because I'm leaving, I'm out the door. So this is you feeling like God is not hearing you. You feel like God is not concerned with you. You feel like he's more concerned about his other children, that he doesn't really care too much about what you're going through and how you're feeling. And that's not true. Okay, God is watching you every step of the way. Okay, he is available for you. Okay, get in a place of worship. Get in a place of, place of prayer. Okay, get in your word. Um, just even if you just need to sit in silence and allow God to speak to you. But he is there. He sees all that you're going through and he does care about you. He does want to get you out of those spaces and those places, okay? He's not leaving you to hang, okay? He's not leaving you to be lonely and left alone, okay? There's purpose in everything that you are going through. You will come out on the other side victorious. It goes on and it says, never no more will you see me. This is the end because now I know you've been cheating. I'm a sucker for love. All right, so this is you still saying like you don't feel that God is hearing you. You don't feel like he's there. You can't see him, you know, so you're you're struggling in your relationship with him. Um, and you really are about to walk out the door and just give up on him because, again, you feel like he doesn't hear you. He doesn't see you. He doesn't care about your circumstances. And he does care very much. And he's working behind the scenes for you. OK, and just you remaining in his presence okay getting in his presence learning more about him and seeking him it says seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you okay continue to seek him okay because he is there and he does want to speak to you okay and he does want to show you more life and he wants to give you life and life more abundantly it goes back to the course and it says what you won't do do for love you tried everything but you don't give up what you won't do, do for love. You tried everything, but you don't give up. Okay, so this passion that you have for seeking who God really is through whatever means that you did try, which aren't of him, he's saying that you still have this desire to know God, okay? You have this hunger to really want to be in real relationship with him, okay? And I'm here to tell you the only way is through Jesus Christ. He is the truth, the life, and the way, all right? And so continue to see God, all right? And continue to be in prayer, be in worship, be in your word, continue to seek him. All right, God loves you. He is there for you and he has purpose and plan for you, okay? All right, it goes on and it says, now he left you with scars, tears on your pillow and you still stay. So these scars are the things that has happened to you. So, you know, through this, you know, journey you have been having with God, you felt like he's done you wrong okay he's left you with some scars and tears on your pillowcase because of you not understanding why you went through certain things why certain things happened to you and it really hurt you to the point where you know things that people may have done to you that you feel like god allowed this to happen to you when it was people that were just doing you wrong because they were evil or um they were going through things or they weren't in relationship with god okay because evil is a thing and it may have caused you to blame God because of the things that other people may have done to you. And you felt like God caused this and now you have scars, all right? And you've been crying and you still stay in relationship with him because you know he's real. You know that he does exist. It says, as you sit and pray, hoping the beatings go away. It wasn't always a hit and run relationship. It used to be love, happiness, and companionship. Okay, so you've been praying hoping the beatings go away, hoping the pain of what you've been through will go away. You know, the things that people have done to you, the things that you have felt betrayed, you have felt reje rejected, and all of these things that people may have done to tear you down, to destroy you, um, those are the beatings, and you've been praying and hoping that they go away. So you really need to be praying for your peace, okay, over your mind, all right? 
for your sanity and humanity, all right? God wants you to be free from the pain of the things that have happened to you. He wants to set you free, all right? And he can do that. So go to God and allow him to free your mind. Cast those negative thoughts out of your mind. Don't allow Satan to keep pulling you into your past that God has already freed you from or is trying to free you from, okay? Cast those negative thoughts out. Do not allow Satan to keep playing with your mind. When, the, when they come up, cast them out immediately, okay? If you need therapy, I am not against therapy because some people's trauma is so deep, all right? And yes, we know Jesus healed, but God also can speak and use other people. So just do your research. Therapy is not a bad thing for some people that some people really do need it. And um, yes, he wants to free your mind. He wants to clear you from the pain and the trauma that has been traumatizing you and, and has been keeping you in a space to where you can't grow. All right, those beatings, he can set you free from those, okay? But you have to allow yourself to allow him to help you get rid of those beatings that are in your mind, the playbacks of the past. The enemy wants to play, keep you in the past because if he can keep you in the past, you can't move forward into the future. Your future is greater than your past. So when you keep having those memories playing back and back and back and back about what people did to you and how you have been hurt and how you have been played and done dirty, if you keep allowing Satan to play with your mind like that, that's what he wants. If Satan can have your mind, he can have everything else. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But God has better for you. He has more for you. you and he will get you through whatever it is that you are feeling. All right? When it says it wasn't always a hit and run relationship, it used to be love, happiness, and companionship. Okay, so you and God had a good relationship at one point. Um, it wasn't always a hit and run. You leaving and coming back. You leaving and coming back. It used to be happiness and companionship. It says, remember when I treated you good, I moved you up to the hills, out the ills of the ghetto hood. Okay, so God has done things for you. And you have seen the evidence of God in your life. Okay, he has provided for you in, in the past and in the ways. And he's telling you to remember what he has already done for you so far. Okay. It says, me and you, a happy home. When it was on, I had a love to call my own. Okay, so you and God, he's, the Bible says that he will make his home in you. Okay, you guys have a happy home. When you are with God, all right, you have that peace that surpasses all understanding when you are with him. You had a love. You had a love to call your own, okay? God is your one and true love in this life, all right? And he is the one that makes you whole and complete it says i should have seen you was trouble but i was lost trapped in your eyes preoccupied with getting tossed no need to lie you had a man and i knew it you told me don't worry about it we can do it now i'm under pressure okay so god is saying that to the man some of your distractions have been women okay you've been knowing that these women are not good for you but you've been um, entertaining them all right He's saying you've been occupied with women. You've been occupied with you've been occupied with fornicating. You've been occupying with um, allowing women to just stir you in the wrong direction. Okay, this has pulled you away from God greatly. Okay, a woman can be a man's greatest influence, or she can be a man's greatest downfall. And for a lot of you men, women have been your greatest downfall because the discernment ain't been there, and because just lust has gotten in the way and just you um, feeling like this makes you a man. This makes you feel more like you're somebody if you can conquer a woman or you can conquer many women instead of seeking God for confidence, seeking God for self-love. You've been allowing women to stir you in the wrong direction and pull you away from him. It says, make a decision because I'm waiting. When I'm alone, I'm on the phone having secret conversations. God is saying, make a decision because he's waiting on you to come back to him, to really be for real this time about what he has called you to do, what he is wanting you to do in the earth. And then it says, having secret conversations on the phone. You're having secret conversations, meaning you're still talking to women. You're still moving around in your old ways and he's saying come on get it together make a decision i'm waiting okay 
It says, I want to take your misery, replace it with happiness, but I need your faith in me. I'm a sucker for love. Okay, so God is saying he wants to take away your misery. He wants to replace it with happiness, but he needs your faith in him. Okay, he needs you to have faith. He needs you to trust him in your journey and in your walk in life. He needs you to allow him to order your steps and you follow. Okay, trust him. Walk by faith, not by sight, not by what you see, not by your circumstances, not by what's going on to, with you, but have faith in him every step of the way that he will get you through whatever it is you're going through, whether it's you being tested, trials, um, storms of life, it doesn't matter. He's there. He sees and knows all, and he is going to help you and get you out of whatever situation and things that you may be feeling and dealing with inside and out. And then it says, I'm a sucker for love, meaning you do love God, okay? And your love for God needs to be more of an action now with trusting him than it is with you just saying it. And then it goes on to the course what you won't do, do for love. You tried everything, but you don't give up. What you won't do, do for love. You tried everything, but you don't give up. Okay, and that's basically the ending of the song. It just keeps repeating the chorus. All right, so you've tried everything already. Nothing else has brought you any type of peace other than when you know you believed in Jesus Christ. When you were in relationship with him, you know him to be true. So it's time, sons, for y'all to come back to God and take y'all's rightful position in the kingdom god has a purpose and a plan for you and he is ready for you to be used all right for his righteousness and for his glory so go back to your first love which was god okay so that is all that i have for you guys in this video take this word back to god and i will see y'all in the next video bye